Real Life presents the Jack Hibbs Podcast, with intention and boldness to proclaim truth, equip the saints, and impact our culture. Don't let anyone ever tell you there's a separation from religion and politics. I think Satan invented that statement. If there's a separation, then why are the people that are calling the shots infringing upon your biblical worldview values? You can get the outlines of this podcast by going to jackhibbs.com slash podcast. Today, if this podcast lifts you up and encourages you to live a more fulfilled life in Christ, then make sure you leave us one of those five-star ratings. To us, that's like saying amen or yes. Then that rating will encourage others to listen. Now open your hearts to what God's Word has to say to you. Here is Jack Hibbs. The same God that knows about the past, who prophesies the future, he's also the God that is in control of the future. We need to remember that. We need to stop worrying about stuff. I'm watching all this stuff, and I'm glad to be an old guy now. When you get older, you don't worry about much. And I grew up in a home. My mom, she could teach a course on how to worry. But we're watching right now what's going on with China and how China is manipulating our economy right now and how China is holding up ships off the coast of Beijing that are not coming here, but they're supposed to be going to Houston. They're supposed to be going to San Francisco and Long Beach. They're supposed to be going to London. They're not going. You're not reading about this in the news. They're loaded up and they're parked. They've been told they can't leave these ports. They can't go any further. Why, what's going on? A lot of military analysts are telling us that we are actually now in to World War III. The bombs haven't started flying yet. America's got to become weakened before that can happen. How do you weaken America? You weaken her economy. How do you weaken her economy? You stop buying and selling. How do you do that? You stop the importation of the stuff that we sent away to be made in some other country because of greed and profit. And now it's come back to bite us because we didn't trust God. The hope is not in the White House. The only hope for America is in God's house. It's in God's word, I'm telling you right now. And then, present day. Our God's in control of present day. He's in control of the future, the past, present day. Is your God that big? Have you read your Bible? Let me tell you, church. Know your Bible. The more you read your Bible, the bigger God gets. It's an amazing thing how that happens. And Jesus said in Matthew 5, 17, do not think that I've come to destroy the law and the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to fulfill, which is a beautiful verse, by the way, because there's people who will say, I just believe in the God of the New Testament, not the old. (laughs) Well, you got a problem right there because Jesus said, I am here to fulfill everything of the old. (laughs) The Old Testament. For assuredly, I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, One jot or one tittle, one comma, one hyphen of the Hebrew language will by no means pass away till all is fulfilled. (laughs) That's what God, that's what the author of the Bible said about the Bible. You know, I'd like to take, I would like to debate him on that. Go ahead, but he he wrote the book. It's his book. He's the author. And by the way, he's given you breath right now to debate him, which is kind of fun, right? Because he could just, you know, Darth Vader, he could just kind of go. He could, you know. I don't believe in God. I think I'm... I'd like to see it, but that's not Christian. Right? So I'm going to run through this. The Bible says, the Bible says that in the last days, Israel will return back to her homeland. For 2,000 years, Israel had no home. And on May 14th, 1948, Israel became a nation, not in a week, not in three days, Not in a month, not in a year, but based upon the book of Isaiah, God says, I will reassemble my nation in one day. And little did President Truman know that when he defended and stood alone in many ways against the nations of the world, declared, I support, America supports, the United States is behind 
The creation of the state of Israel. On May 14, 1948, Israel was born, and on May 15th, Israel was attacked. She's been in her land ever since. She's not going anywhere. God says in the book of Amos, once I've brought them back from all the nations of the world, they will never again be uprooted. The Bible says Israel would be on the map again. Question to any skeptics, is Israel on your map? Since May 14, 1948, the answer is yes. The Bible says that the Jewish people would return back to their ancient land in unbelief. The book of Ezekiel, chapters 36, 7, and 8. That Israel would move, Jews would move from their foreign homelands, if I can put it that way, and move back to Israel, though their ancestors had not been there for 2,000 years. Jews were making aliyah. I'm going home to a home I've never been to before. And Israel today is one of the greatest cutting edge nations on technology. In fact, if you go with us and we'll drive up what is their version of the Pacific Coast Highway, it's the Via Maris, it's the Mediterranean uh, 101. <laughs> what are you gonna see? Hewlett Packard, Raytheon, Microsoft, Apple, all these corporations, did you know that? In their Silicon Valley. It is the epicenter of technology now. The Bible says that the world would be increasing in wars. Now, you can be a skeptic today and say, oh, I don't believe in the Bible. Well, then, listen, the Bible says that as we get further down the timeline, that there's going to be an increasing amount of wars. Jesus said there'll be, and you read it today, wars and rumors of wars. This slide shows you what's going on with Seoul, Korea right now. Officials and experts in Washington and Seoul agree North Korea is set to conduct its seventh nuclear test in its first since January 2017. Looming North Korea nuclear test leaves U.S. and South Korea waiting for bad news. Next, China and Taiwan. You guys all know, right, that China has been biting at the bit to take Taiwan back forever. Why are they talking about this now? Because they can. Let me ask you this. What's happening now is, who's going to stop them? Who's, who, who's going to stop China? Hey, no one's going to stop China. No one can stop China. Wars and rumors of wars. The Bible says that there's going to be a destabilization of global economics and currencies. Don't worry, don't leave yet. There's some encouragement coming. <laughs> The Bible says that there'll be global unification. Revelation chapter 13. It's being dubbed, it's being pawned as the great reset. In Davos, all the world major players have signed on, which is interesting because it's not only nations, it's the world elite, the gates the Bezos, the princes, the kings of this world. Isn't it interesting? The book of Revelation says that when God intervenes in the tribulation period, that the kings of the earth will mourn over their loss when it says that all the trading that they did by the sea would stop by virtue of God's intervention into the world. That's, that's in the future, but wow, the power of that. Think of that. Think of the power of God. Look, I missed it, I guess. I, we were not here, but apparently, it's a shockeroony. There was an electric storm here? And uh, normally, if you see an electric storm, don't you feel a little insignificant? All of a sudden, you don't see anybody bragging with a lightning rod in their hand. God can humble the nations in a second, people. The Bible says. The Bible says that the Middle East would be in a state of crisis and that Israel must be isolated from the nations of the world. I want to show you what Russia is talking about. This is actually insane, but not insane. This is part of a world war spooling up. I guess I should stop. Leave that on the screen. Let me give you some encouragement. How many of you are young? When you're 40 or under. I can say that. I'm way over that. So come on. Well, don't be shy. No, I don't want them to find out. That's it? How many of you are 40 and over? I thought this church was so much younger. I thought we had a young church. No, I'm kidding.
listen, are you thinking about building that house or going to that school or getting that job or having that baby or getting married? Listen, he said, well, I was until I got here today. <laughs> nope, that's the awesome thing about being a believer. Do it, do it. So I was praying to the Lord for confirmation. God, give me a word. Should I marry her? Yes. <laughs> I mean, if they're a believer, as believers, we don't live in fear. We don't know the day or the hour. She said, yeah, but with all this stuff's going on, listen, not, this argues so much for you having a tight, beautiful knit family unit, friends and family, and a church connection. Doesn't mean you just, well, that's it, it's over. I heard the message. No, 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 no. The world may think like that. We are believers. We live joyful, awesome, radical lives for Jesus. Look at this. This is almost funny if it wasn't so real. Russia reportedly drafts UN Security Council resolution condemning Israel over Syria. Did you follow that? Russia is talking to all the nations of the world. We want you to vote to cut Israel off because of what they're doing in Syria. Why doesn't somebody at the United Nothing say, why do you care? Aren't you busy in the Ukraine? Do you see what's happening? You guys are old enough. This is World War II type stuff. What do you care? Here's why they care. Russia has a treaty to supply protection to Iran, Persia. You say, Jack, you're losing me. Dude, I don't see anything on there about Persia. That's because Persia's in Syria right now. In fact, next slide, guys. You have the slide about the palace? Uh, there, this is great. Israel, watch this. Israel warns Assad, that's him. His palace could be target of next counter Iran strike. Did you get that? He's the leader of Syria. But Israel says, we are attacking Iran. Where? In Syria. What's Iran doing in Syria? <laughs> They're pointing missiles at Israel. And I got to tell you, Iran, Persia is smart. Do you know where they put their rocket launchers and missiles and stuff? By schools and universities and hospitals. And next door to the king's palace. <laughs> Can you imagine the king, excuse me, I think I saw a rocket near my house. What is this? What is this rocket? Pointing at Israel at my house. Don't worry about it. Don't worry. We, we're using your house. We're going to attack Israel from your house, from your front yard. And then Israel, Israel will retaliate. But what do we care? Because we're Iranians. We're Persians. You're Syrian. We don't care. This is what's happening. This, listen, this world's gone mad. If you're not a Christian, why not? What in the world? The Bible says that Israel will be standing alone in the last days. All nations will turn their back on Israel. What will this government do with Israel? And then the Bible says in Isaiah 5, 20, chapter 5, verse 20, Woe to those who call evil good and good evil. And I don't you to think this through now. Woe to those who say, that's not what it is. This is what it is. The Bible says God is good. The Bible says that God does good. But the Bible warns that there's going to be people who call evil good and good evil. Convoluted, at least. Who put darkness for light and light for darkness. Who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. I can sum this up, one verse with one word, confusion. Confusion. I say all of this to say to you today, and you be the judge. Jesus said, when I come back, it's going to be like it was in the days of Noah, where man was thinking evil constantly. Jesus said, I'm going to come back at a time when it's like Sodom, 
and Gomorrah. He didn't say like Detroit and Schenectady. He said Sodom and Gomorrah. From those cities, we get sexually transmitted disease words from. We get sexual acts from those cities. <laughs> Jesus said, there's going to be a time of insane, confused, aberrant sexuality on the face of the earth, and that's an indicator of my return. What's happening now, church, I wouldn't, I wouldn't change for anything in the world. I know this sounds rough. I know this is too much reality, too much information. But let's remember this. Jesus Christ died on the cross for all of our sins, and he rose again from the dead, but that only blesses your life if you receive his offer. But can't you at least see that the world is trending exactly as the Bible said it would? Can you see that you need him so badly? I need him so badly. And is it possible, I believe it is, that God is saying, America, Christians, pastors, I handed you an opportunity on Friday. Honor me with it. The decision is ours. Don't let anyone ever tell you that there's a separation from religion and politics. I think Satan invented that statement. Amen. If there's a separation, then why are the people that are calling the shots infringing upon your biblical worldview values? Abortion is not a political issue. It's a spiritual issue. Because God makes life, gives life. Freedom, freedom is not a political issue. It's a God-given stamp on our hearts. I am thrilled to see what's going to happen next because God has handed, extended an olive branch. I think I know you. I'm going to do everything I can and beyond what I can to wear myself out, to do him right, to do him good because I don't want to fumble this close to the end zone. Let's do the right thing. Father, we praise you. Father, we thank you. Lord God in heaven. All of this can be healed if we just let him rule and reign in our lives. He's loving, he's kind, he's tender. And he wants to transform your life. He paid for it at the cross. He guaranteed it with an empty tomb. And he's extending it to you right now for the taking. Make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. You'll never regret it. This Jack Kemp's podcast, as well as all the broadcast outreach opportunities, are listener-supported. Will you consider partnering with us through a special gift? Go to jackhibbs.com to learn more and stay connected. Free.